All right, boys and girls, what's good with you? BQ here with the Negative BQ YouTube channel. We've got an impact mailbag here. I haven't done a mailbag episode in quite some time. Uh, every once in a while, I like to take a good handful of questions from the Impact Lounge engagements group on Facebook. So if you're not a part of that, go ahead and look it up. Um, I like to keep it, you know, it's a tight group. We got, you know, a little over 100 right now. And that was always my goal to have just, just a good 100 120 people in there type of thing. It's not one of those groups that I, I want a bunch of, you know, bunch of whoever's in there and not engaging. So good group to be a part of. Got some good people in there and uh, got a few questions here. So we're going to jump right into it. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button, give a thumbs up. And of course, give your thoughts to these actual comments or excuse me, actual questions that they're giving me. And um, let's hear what you have to think as well. All right. So first one here, I know you've been critical of him in the past, especially with what seemed to be the sudden weight gain. But what are your thoughts on Sammy Callahan, who once said he wanted to be the face of impact, not being re-signed? So his right now I'm recording this on October 1st. His contract ran out yesterday, I believe, September 30th. I think the 30th. There's 30 days in September, right? So it ran out. Um, he was not, he does not appear to have been resigned. We don't know any details about contract negotiations, but he is one of two wrestlers who has said, I want to be the face of impact wrestling. I want to carry the banner it was Sammy and Eddie Edwards. And there's really been a trend, even with guys like Moose of the guys who were long-term impact guys. You can call them lifers if you want to, but the guys who were just here signing the three-year deals, the long-term contracts, it is almost like, and, and it's, it's not this way 100% of the time because I'd be lying if I said that was the case, but it's almost like the ones who are here long-term don't get meaningful title runs. They you know, they probably get a title at some point, but if, if you think about the total number of championships held by Sammy Callahan, Eddie Edwards, um, Moose. Um, we'll say those three for now. We'll say those three. We'll even throw, we can throw Rich Swan in there too. He's been around about four years. You can total those guys championships up. And what is it? Five, six, and I don't mean Eddie Edwards, tag team champion, part of the Wolves. I'm talking about single wrestler, singles wrestler Eddie Edwards, singles wrestler Sammy Callahan, singles wrestler Moose, singles wrestler Rich Swan. And you could probably throw one or two other guys in there, but you get where I'm going with it. The ones who are really around long term and they're committing, it's these short title runs or they're not meaningful, or they don't get multiple title runs. Sammy Callahan, when he was the world champion, that was strictly to put the title on Tessa Blanchard. When he beat Brian Cage for the title, Brian Cage didn't even roll out of the ring before Tessa Blanchard's music hit. And they let you know that was the feud. Brian Cage didn't even get a rematch for his title, I don't think. They jumped right into Tessa, and that told me everything I needed to know, that Sammy Callahan was a transitional champion. At one point, he was one of the hottest wrestlers in the company. This was, you know, this was when he hit Eddie Edwards with the bat, unfortunately. But, I mean, there was so much buzz around this dude. They did not put a title on him. Um, at one point, Rich Swan was the X Division champion, and they had a really, really good feud. And... Sammy Callahan should have won that belt. This was at, I want to say it was Slammiversary, that one Slammiversary that, no, what, what pay-per-view was this? Might have been Rebellion, but it was one of the really, really good pay-per-views that they did that first year when, when Don Callis was around and, and all that. So it was an excellent match. And uh, I, I remember there was this one moment where he blinded Rich Swan with, some kind of powder and then pile drove him his finisher off the second rope 
onto Legos. And Rich Swan kicked out. And that's what took me out of that match at that point, because that, then we just got ridiculous. But Sammy should have won that X Division championship. They should have given this guy an opportunity to run with the title back when he was, when he was really um, controversial. And then he, you know, he did the OVE thing, and the o- and OVE didn't beat anybody, nobody. They lost every single match to Tessa Blanchard, except for the two single matches that Sammy did beat her. But they allowed her, the female, to run through the stable. She beat them all. Uh, didn't matter if it was tag team matches, singles, whatever. So it, OVE was very dead at one point. I was a big proponent of them bringing in Nevea as a female to freshen up the group. Uh, they didn't do that. And OVE just, it, it got very stale, very bland, very boring. And so did he. There was minimal character progression with Sammy Callahan. And I know he sent out a tweet a couple months ago that Chris Jericho, he looked up to Chris Jericho because he always invented himself and that's how he's modeled his career. I I don't really agree because I I would argue Sammy Callahan's almost the same exact wrestler as when he joined the company. It's just that now he's bald, you know? Um, I was critical about the weight gain type of thing, Uh, but I've I've gained weight myself. You know what I mean? Uh, We all have. Um, but to me, when I see that in professional wrestlers, guys like him and Eddie, it just seems like a, a comfort level. Like, hey, I've, I've, I'm comfortable with my contract here. Um, they're not going to do anything special with me. I'm not going to wrestle at the top of the card. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go to the gym and bust my ass and and look like a star because I'm not going to be world champion, you know? So I was critical not so much of him, but just – it, it, it when I said the weight gain thing, it was more about his spot in the card, you know, like why would he bust his ass to to look like the face of impact wrestling? And they never tried to make him the face of impact wrestling. But this was someone who he really, really waved the flag. He waved the banner. He um, promoted it hard on social media. And the company never really did him any favors because he was signed long term. So why why should they? So it's the end of the Sammy Callahan era. He he probably does need to move on at this point. I don't see where he goes though. I think he's, you know, just might be a mainstay on the Indies at one point. And I wonder what when they brought back Madman Fulton and Jay Christ for this feud with the design, I wonder how much dialogue there was to bring them back full time. Maybe he wanted it, maybe they didn't give it to him. And He was pissed. I mean, he announced well in advance that he was going to be a free agent. I mean, he knew he was not returning. Whether the company told him no or he didn't want to return, you know. So it's a big loss in the sense that he was one of the recognizable faces of the company, recognizable characters. Um, So in that sense, it's, it's a big loss. And he is someone you can throw into main event angles and shit when necessary. I thought one of the biggest things they did to drop the ball was when he returned after his injury. Cause you remember they showed him breaking his ankle to we own the night on an episode. And um, when he returned, they announced the return. And I thought that was just such a mistake. I thought the pop would have just been massive if the lights went out and this fool was just standing in the ring. And I, I, to this day do not understand why for an impact plus show, they felt the need to, to promote him that he was, you know, that he was coming back. I just thought that was a major missed opportunity to just make him, you know, just get that huge pop and then maybe elevate him a little bit from there. But they just didn't. They never did. They had, you know, he's always been involved in decent feuds, but that's it. The Sammy Callahan era appears to be over. And as I said, he was one of the recognizable characters in the company. And when you start losing these guys, you lose your identity. You know, he was part of the identity of, of impact, I would say. So that was a really long answer for that one. It was the main question. I will not answer the rest uh, that slowly and that long, I promise you. Um, all right, what are your thoughts on Moose signing? So we're in, in the same ballpark here, question-wise. What are your thoughts on Moose signing? What's been called the longest contract in recent impact history, and how long do you think he signed for? So 
clearly they they found Moose to be a priority. Moose is one of the guys they do not want to let go. And uh, you can't replace Moose. He's irreplaceable. And they have a history of letting go of irreplaceable guys. You see how much they're regretting it now with Eli Drake because now he's one of the biggest stars in WWE. And, you know, their Twitter is going to let you know he used to wrestle there and they're going to act like they gave a shit when he was there. They released a YouTube video, five matches that make you say, yeah. It's pathetic in my opinion. How long do I think he's signed for? I would assume without knowing that he's signed for five years because I think the standard long-term contracts are about three. So if I had to take a guess, I would say five uh, positioning themselves to you know finish his career with the company. And I think this is like budget cut time of the year where they're like, hey, can we you know can we cut a little bit of salary? Cut, you know, so that after Bound for Glory, we can do a bit of a reset. But that's why Bound for Glory is like a, a shit show every year. It's not smooth. The other pay per views are smooth. Bound for Glory is always there's always something, man. Like I, I'm, I feel like by the time it rolls around, one of the matches are going to get changed. Someone's going to get hurt. Something. But you know, you lose Sammy Callahan, you lose PCO, you lose Yuya, who was part of the most over tag team they have at the moment. And now you're like, what do we do? So you can't lose a guy like Moose. Uh, I'm sure they're paying him very, very well. But I would say five years. That is that is my guess. If I had to guess how long Moose is going to be around for. And it's crazy because he has publicly said he wanted to wrestle for WWE. You know, he's without being like a WWE fanboy, he was kind of like, hey, you know, I'm really happy here in Impact. I would like to wrestle for WWE one day. And I, I'm shocked that AEW didn't throw money at him after he had that match with Kenny Omega. Because you saw what happened when W. Morrissey showed up there. They threw money at him immediately and Impact lost him. So I, I'm really sure. I'm, I mean, I'm really surprised they didn't make a push for him. But he's irreplaceable, so it's good that he's returning. Next question. Of the 1,000, Impact 1,000 he's referring to, special guests, who would you like to see back on the roster full-time? That's an easy one. Angelina Love. I think the knockouts is in the best place it's ever been talent wise. It's a fairly large roster, even though it feels like we get the same matches over and over. It's mainly because we see just Giselle Shaw wrestle the same people over and over, but it's in a good place right now. I think Angelina love, I mean, really the beautiful people in general, I would have, I would keep velvet sky with her as a manager, not as a commentator. God, no. God, no. I posted a video of her in the Impact Lounge engagement group doing some commentary. Max the Impaler was doing a gorilla press slam with one hand. You got you got to check that out. You got to check how bland that woman is. But as the beautiful people, she's great. So I would love to see Angelina Love, especially because she's one of the ones with the long... Uh, she has... What, doesn't she have like five knockouts title reigns? I'm trying to think. They... Josh Matthews used to bring it up all the time that Gail Kim was tied with Angelina Lena Love or or whatever. But someone who has that kind of resume with the company, I, I would absolutely bring her back. I, that's that's not even like a, out of the question for me because she can still wrestle. But the beautiful people was such a popular thing in Impact, and you know they they did versions of it later. But the the real beautiful people version that hits is Angelina and Velvet. You can throw Madison Rain in there and um, what the hell's her name? Von Eric. Uh, why can't I think of it her first name? She's absolutely gorgeous. But um, you, you can bring, you, you can throw those girls in. You can do other things. The version of it is Angelina and Velvet. And people like it. They came back to Impact 1000 and didn't miss a beat. You know, so I would I would keep her around. Frankly, I would bring her partner from the the allure in, um, Mandy Leone. I don't know what in the world she's doing. I cannot believe she's not involved with the ROH product or AEW. But I think she could be a star in Impact. So I I think you know clearly they're going Deanna and um, 
Tasha Steele's here challenging for the tag titles, but if you can get the allure in there, I, I would 100% do that. But it starts with with keeping Angelina Love. So that's what I would like to see happen. All right, last one here from the rumors of the upgrades coming to Impact after Bound for Glory or in 2024 most likely. Do you believe we're finally going to get quality production on weekly TV and live events? I've spoke about this a little bit in the past. Well, I mean, I speak about their production quality every week, right? I've, I have beat that horse to absolute death because it bothers me that much every episode. Now they have fixed the in-ring. It's not over color corrected. It's not dark. It looks good in the ring. Okay. The backstage segments are the ones that look really, really bad. And they looked horrible this past episode. I don't know. Well, we don't know. And just like the question, we don't know if these changes are coming after Bound for Glory or the top of the year. If they're smart, they will do it after Bound for Glory. But it really doesn't matter. One of the two. Start off the year and the show has to look fresh and different. You have to get rid of the damn song. You have to get a new mentality back there. I don't know if production quality means hardware I don't know if it means personnel. I think the personnel is more the issue. I think we need fresh ideas on how to present this product. NWA, for for as bad as it was the last couple of years, every season that they do, they go into and say, how can we present the show differently? And right now, because the first season of NWA was phenomenal, and then it was really, really bad after the pandemic, and I mean bad. And now this current season here, they got rid of Velvet Sky. They've made some changes to the presentation of the show. And it's so much easier to watch. What The difference they made, which the, the one I don't agree with, is you don't see any fans on camera at all. None. You have no clue how many are there. You don't even know if there's, there's fans, if it's not just the wrestlers, you know. But they do entrances now where they didn't have, they had entrances, but they didn't have music. So now they do these entrants, but it's very like women of wrestling style where it's a pre-tape. It just shows them doing their, t- their song, their um, entrance to the music, but it's a pre-tape. And then when they show both entrances, they're in the ring. So it's something a little bit different, but, you know, listening to interviews with Billy Corgan, he's like, you know, we're trying to update the product as we move along. And Impact has been the same, same, same looking show for four years at least now we're getting more episodes where the camera is on the crowd but now what we need is bleachers we need high-rise bleachers kind of like at the impact zone in orlando because that's going to look like there's more people there because it still looks like there's nobody there and we see these pictures people share it on on x and on facebook and here i'm at the tapings here's the crowd and we see this huge crowd and then we watch the episode and we don't see it they look the same They sound the same and they've made little changes as far as, you know, one of the things that was critical was showing the highlights for two minutes and then playing wheel in the night for two minutes and then no one wrestle. And then we get the wrestlers entrances and no one's wrestling. The bell doesn't ring till like seven minutes into the episode. So they've made changes like that. They've cut down on wheel in the night playing 50 times. Now it's only playing 40 times throughout the episode. They've, um, They've made small adjustments, but it's a mindset change that I really think is is what it is. I think they have to have new personnel in there that says, okay, we're going to try these these angles here. Uh, One angle that I would like to see more is the wide crowd shot where it shows everyone, you know, like so you see everyone who's there because they they do show that a little bit. But I want to see some of the wrestling like that from really far away for just 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 a little bit, you know. But they they got to try to do some new things because this show, every time I watch it, I'm like, it looks exactly the same. The format is just there's no change to it whatsoever, and I don't want to feel like that anymore. It was so bad at one point that I almost shut down. I, I talked about about this on an episode with TW about a year ago. I had my tweet written out that I was done with the channel. I was done with the Impact Lounge. I was quitting. 
because I was watching a show and it was not making me happy. I just, I was losing my mind at how much they were playing the song. They, they used to have the background impact screensaver where it was just, it was bright red. I mean, it was like twice the red we see now. And it was like blinding me. I was just, I was just like, I don't enjoy watching this. They had the camera angle showing eight people in the crowd. And I'm just like, man, I just, this doesn't make me happy. I'm not having fun watching this. This is a chore. It's Groundhog Day. It's every episode looks like this, you know, and fortunately they have made some changes. So I think there are some people back there that realize it can't always be like this. It had, you know, there has to be some people back there that sees it and says, this doesn't look good. There has to be. So I'm really looking forward to it, to seeing what they do. I've been every single year I do this podcast. I'm like, okay, it's bound for glory, soft reset after bound for glory, or it's top of the year, soft reset. Like you've got to switch it up. So that's why I think it's more of a personnel issue than their actual hardware, you know, HD cameras and and whatever, or whatever software they're using to edit. Who knows? We, we have no clue what this means. But the good news is that they, it seems like they're finally starting to recognize it can't be like this. Because the other thing I've always said is the other wrestling shows on TV are NXT, AEW, WWE. They look amazing. And then you go to Impact and it looks like MLW. A little better than MLW. MLW works because it's part of the charm of the company. And NWAs is part of the charm of the company. With Impact, you look at it and it just looks bad. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm really excited for this first episode after Bound for Glory. Do they make the changes? I could also see them waiting for the top of the year because Bound for Glory happens and then there's a Thanksgiving episode and best of episodes that who the fuck cares? They, they phone it in the last couple months of the year. So I wouldn't be shocked if it wasn't uh, 2024 that they do it. So uh, I don't, I want to avoid repeating myself too much about some of these things. So I'll probably cut it right there, but um, I am ready for this day. You have, you have no idea. I'm telling you, if we kick off 2024 and it looks the same, I, I may lose my shit. So thanks for checking me out, guys. I'm your boy BQ. Stay negative.